Hello everyone, my name is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel today. I am so excited to bring you guys my top 10 romance books of 2020. If you recall from my previous video, which was just my top 10 books of 2020, I will of course link that up in the cards above in case you missed it. I did mention in that video that because adult romance was definitely my most read genre of 2020, that I just needed to do a completely separate video about all of my favorite romances of the year. So technically I do have a top 20 books of 2020, but I just split them up into two videos. So just like with the previous video, I agonized and agonized over this ranking. I am ranking them from 10 to number one of the year. Yes, this was definitely definitely a chore for me because I've never ranked my favorites like this before. Um, so without further ado, let's just get into it. Number 10 on this list is The Deal by Elle Kennedy. This is a new adult romance. It is the first book in her off-campus series and this was quite the surprise for me. So let me tell you a little bit of what this one is about. We are following Garrett and Hannah. Hannah is actually a vocal performance major in college, which is awesome because that's what I majored in. And so it was really cool to relate to her character in that way. I will say her curriculum was quite a bit different than what I went through in college. I feel like she is more majoring in like pop vocal performance, whereas I was majoring in classical slash operatic vocal performance, if that makes sense. But anyways, let's get back on topic. We have Garrett, who is a hockey player, and if he fails this class that both him and Hannah are in, he will be kicked off of the hockey team and lose his hockey scholarship. So he persuades Hannah to tutor him. The plot goes on from there. This becomes a really adorable friends to lovers romance. One of my favorite things about this is that they really bonded over binging Breaking Bad together. And that just sounds like the most adorable way to really bond with someone and fall in love with them. I will say this book is a lot more serious and darker than I thought it was going to be. Like literally on the first page, it's brought up that Hannah, when she was 15, she was raped at a party. So definitely be aware of that. And Garrett has also gone through domestic abuse. They have both gone through some pretty traumatic things in their lives. And I love that they also kind of bonded over that and they helped each other through their struggles. So yeah, I I wholeheartedly recommend this. I cannot wait to read more from L. Kennedy. Number nine on this list is a historical romance that completely changed the game for me in terms of how I view historical romances and I also just didn't expect much out of this book either but that is The Rakehess by Scarlett Peckham. So this is book one in her Society of Sirens series. First of all this cover is just everything. It's giving me old school vibes. I love like the purple stormy skies in the background. Ugh so so gorgeous but I do feel like this book was mismarketed in a way because I feel like a lot of people went into this expecting this book to be a lot more lighthearted and fun than it really is because the cover and a little bit of the blurb it kind of leads you to believe that this is going to be more about Serafina our main character being a rakehess doing whatever and whomever she wants and just having a fun time and that's not really what this is about so we have Serafina like I said our main character and she is all about women's rights and equality and all of that. And so she is planning on publishing these really powerful memoirs where she is calling out the men that ruined her throughout her life. And then we also have the romance plot, of course. There is this man, Adam, that she meets while she is writing her memoirs in her hometown. Her hometown is like this beautiful coastal little village. So that was one of the things I adored about this book was that the first half or so takes place in this coastal town and I loved the stormy vibes and all of that. Um, but she meets this guy, Adam, who is essentially fixing up the house next door to her. He's actually a widower. He has two children of his own and the romance between Serafina and Adam was everything in my opinion. First of all, I mean, the chemistry can't be denied. Scarlett Peckham writes incredible smut, like just all of the fire emojis. <laughs> this book also heavily centers around Serafina's character development in that at the beginning of the book, she is a very powerful woman, but at the same time, she does cope with sex and alcohol. And so over the course of the book, she is learning to depend on herself more, I guess you could say. And she's working through those issues more so on her own than Adam kind of saving her. I wouldn't call this like a white knight situation at all. Um, so that's also one of the things I loved about this is just how awesome of a character Serafina is. I highly, highly recommend checking this out, but just go into it knowing that this is going to be a lot more of a serious, 
BDS book, but it's also really beautiful at the same time. Number eight on this list is actually another book that was quite surprising for me because I literally thought I was going to despise this book, and that is Vicious by LJ Shen. So I read this for the Smutathon that was going on way back in January. I'm gonna link that reading vlog up in the cards above because I had such a fun time that week just reading all of these smutty romances. Um, but this is a new adult bully romance. And let me tell you a little bit about me. I was bullied a lot as a kid. And so because of that, I thought I was going to hate, 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 hate this book. Um, but I was so shocked and surprised. And this book, for one thing, was just so addictive. I literally could not put it down. Let me tell you a little bit about the plot. First of all, this is book one in her Sinners of Saints series and definitely the best book of the series because I read all of the other books this year as well. And those books were definitely lacking compared to this one. But this one is about our main characters, Amelia and Vicious, although Vicious's name is really barren, but Vicious is his nickname. They are both in high school. And basically Amelia's family lives in the guest house of Vicious's family because Amelia's parents work for Vicious's parents. And so basically there's some kind of weird understanding between Vicious and Amelia and so Vicious hates Amelia's guts now and he just bullies the shit out of her all the time. But at the same time Amelia reacts very interestingly to the bullying. I kind of love their back and forth and then we also see them I think 10 years later they reunite in New York City and that's really when their romance starts. But it is definitely 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 a hate to love enemies to lovers romance because they both really hate each other's guts at the beginning of this book and honestly throughout most of the book they despise each other but their chemistry is amazing the sex scenes are really hot I was very weary of how LJ Shen was going to redeem Vicious's character but I thought she did a fantastic job and by the end of it I was totally rooting for both of them I definitely recommend this if you aren't sure how you feel about new adult bully romances things like that I definitely think this is a book you should try. Next up is a beautiful slow slow burn romance that I actually read twice this year and that is Marriage for One by Ella Mays. It is easily one of the most intense and intimate romances that I've ever read so if you don't know what this is about this is a marriage of convenience which you don't see all that often in contemporary romance. You definitely see that more in historical romances. So this centers around Jack and Rose and yes they even make a joke about how they were doomed from the start because it's a reference to Titanic. So Jack is a lawyer at this really big law firm that is covering Rose's uncle's estate because her uncle passed away recently before this book starts and they find out that her uncle put a clause in his will that she won't be able to get this property that she really wants to use as a coffee house um, if she's not married essentially. So Jack offers to marry her and the plot goes on from there. So one of the things I adore about this book is that Jack is one of the most brooding of brooding characters you will ever see in a romance. And Rose is definitely a quirky character. I loved her sense of humor throughout all of this. Um, one of the things that I adore about this book is that at the end of a lot of the chapters she would put how many times Jack would smile and most of the time it would be zero because he's just such a serious guy. But we find out throughout the book that Jack has been in love with Rose for a very long time. He doesn't know how to express that. And yeah, I just think this is such a beautiful slow burn. I read this twice though because the first time I read it I gave it four stars because I didn't expect it to be as serious as it is. Because I do want to point out that Rose goes through some pretty serious medical issues in this book. There's even a surgery that happens and I didn't know that going into it. I thought this was going to be a bit more lighthearted than that. So that did affect my enjoyment of the book the first time but then upon reread I just loved everything about this book and I couldn't give it less than five stars. So yes, this definitely had to be on my top ten for 2020. Number six on this list is another slow burn romance that totally just took my breath away and that is From Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. So this is my first and only book that I have read for Mariana Zapata so far but I have a couple more of her books on my shelves and I cannot wait to get to them soon. So this one is a figure skating romance as you can probably tell. This is also an enemies to lovers romance. An extreme slow burn. This is also like 500 pages. Are we seeing a theme here? Apparently I 
love slow burn romances and I didn't even know that. Um, but this is about Jasmine and Ivan and they have been rivals for a pretty long time, at least a few years. And they both are into pair skating specifically. Ivan loses his partner, I can't remember why. And Jasmine, I think her partner just like drops her and finds a new partner. And so they're both in need of a partner because Ivan especially, he definitely wants to get to the Olympics again. Um, Jasmine is definitely struggling more in her pair skating career. And so most of this book is the two of them coming to terms with one another, becoming really great friends. By the last like 50 pages, like literally pretty much the very end, they finally become more, they finally become lovers. There's just so much to love about this book. Ivan is a very swoony hero. I loved the way that Mariana Zapata developed their friendship and that we got to see them be friends for a really long time before they became lovers. I just loved it so, so much. So yeah, I cannot wait to read more from Mariana Zapata very soon. So for number five on this list, I'm actually going to talk about a series of three books. I know that some people might consider that cheating, but it's my video. I can do what I want. Um, and this is yet another book slash series that really took me by surprise in 2020. And that is the Naughty Princess Club series by Tara Civic. So this series has three books. We have At the Stroke of Midnight, In Bed with the Beast, and Kiss the Girl, I believe. So this series I actually randomly came upon on Amazon and it just looked like such a fun time. So I bought all of them. And as you can probably tell from the cover, these are retellings of Disney movies that we all know and love, but definitely in a contemporary setting. And they are very ridiculous and quirky retellings as well. You know, I would definitely be aware of the fact that Tara Civic's sense of humor is very much out there, but it works for me. I love this quirky sense of humor for sure. Um, so essentially these three women, we have Cynthia, Isabel, and Ariel. You can guess what fairy tales they are from. And so they are all three in financial peril for very different reasons. And so they decide to open a stripping business together where they will go strip at birthday parties, bachelor parties, things like that. I just loved the elements that Terra Civic did pull from the original stories. But at the same time, these are very, very original stories. So much fun. I loved the audiobooks for all three of these. If I had to pick a favorite among the three, it would probably be In Bed with the Beast just because I related so much to Isabel's character. I always relate to the Belle-like character in any of these retellings. Definitely go into these with a very open mind because I think you will be pleasantly surprised. Number four on this list is A Nordic King by Karina Halley. This is technically book three in her Nordic Royal series, but I have not read the other two books in this series. I had just heard amazing things about this one and so I decided to pick it up. And as you can see, I obviously loved it because one, I had to get myself a physical copy and it's number four on this top 10 list. So this is a romance. We have Aurora who is a governess essentially and she gets this job to work for King Oxel of Denmark. He has two young daughters, Clara and Freya, that he needs looked after and so Aurora gets this job working for him. He is also a very very brooding hero. Clearly I love that trope and the reason why he's so brooding is that at the very beginning of the book we see that his wife, the mother of Clara and Freya, actually never loved him and was having an affair with his butler. And so actually all three of them, so him, the butler, and his wife are in a car together and they get in a very bad car accident and his wife ends up dying that way. So he feels a lot of guilt, but he's also very bitter and jaded because this woman never loved him. And so I loved seeing Aurora sort of make Oxel believe in love again. And they both have some pretty tragic pasts and so they helped each other through that as well. And I just thought it was beautiful. Also the sex scenes in this were so hot. Like Karina Alley, she just knows what she's doing, okay? Um, and Clara and Freya, the two children were endlessly entertaining. Oh my goodness. When kids are done right in a romance novel, I just, adore it so much. This is definitely one of my favorite governess nanny romances. It's just so, so amazing. So I highly, highly recommend trying this out, especially if you've never read from Karina Halley before. And I fully plan on reading more of her books in 2021. Number three on this list is a historical romance that is probably in my top five historical romances of all time. And that is The Prince of Broadway by Joanna Shoup. This is a book two in her Uptown Girl 
Girl series. So this series takes place during the Gilded Age in New York City, so the 1890s-ish, and this centers around three sisters. This one is about Florence, who is the middle sister, and she is definitely kind of the black sheep of the family. She's very quirky and different in comparison to her other sisters and the rest of her family. And she actually wants to open a casino for women, which at that time, like, women weren't even allowed to go in casinos anyway, much less own their own casino and have a casino just for women. So that was definitely very bold of her. And so she goes to this man, Clayton, who owns the local casino to try to get some tips and lessons from him in terms of how to run a casino and all of that. And a romance, of course, ensues between the two of them. What I loved about this was that it was so much fun. Definitely one of the most fun historical romances that I have ever read because there are so many vivid scenes in this that I can still remember one in particular where Florence ends up going to this burlesque club that Clayton's rival owns. She ends up going on stage as one of the burlesque dancers to make him jealous. Like that was so much fun. I mean it's really because of this book alone that Joanna Shoup is quickly becoming one of my absolute favorite historical romance authors. Just loved the dynamic so much between Florence and Clayton and the smut was absolutely amazing. I could go on and on and on about this book but I highly recommend not only this book but the entire Uptown Girl series especially if you've never read from Joanna Shoup before. So number two and number one on this list I don't think are going to be a surprise to anyone because these are literally two of my favorite romance authors ever at this point. Um, so for number two I had to mention The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. I did read this in March of 2020 so you knew that Tessa Dare had to show up on my top 10 of 2020. So this is book three in her Girl Meets Duke series, another historical romance series that I highly 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 recommend, especially if you've never read from Tessa Dare before or if you're just getting into historical romance. So this series centers around these four best friends. They're all wallflowers. They're kind of quirky and different women in the eyes of the London society. So this book in particular is about Penelope Campion. She actually owns her own house. She's a lady. She is a huge animal lover. She owns so many different types of animals. I think, I mean, there's cats and dogs. There's this parrot that yells out obscene phrases and so they they believe that this parrot grew up in a brothel. Um, I think there's like an otter and a goat. Like there's all kinds of animals living in this house. And then there's this man, Gabriel Duke, who is trying to fix up the house next door so that he can sell it. He can flip it and sell it. But he's pretty sure no one's going to want to buy the house he's fixing up if there's animals just running all over the place next door. And so he meets Penelope and his goal is to find homes for all of these animals. And of course, a romance ensues between the two of them. Ugh, this book was just everything. It was so much fun and typical Tessa Dare fashion. I was laughing so much, but there's also quite a bit of depth to this story. I do want to point out that Penelope was molested as a child and that is discussed quite a bit in this book, but at the same time everything is just balanced out really well. Both the heavy topics and the funny ones. I loved the romance between Gabriel and Penelope. This is a very typical Slytherin Hufflepuff romance. If you're here for that you will love this. Also this is definitely a grump sunshine trope. So yes, I could go on and on about this book, but it's absolutely fantastic and I cannot recommend it enough. All right guys, we made it to the number one spot on this list. And yet again, I am using an entire series to take up this spot because I literally could not pick between the three of these books. This will be no surprise to any of you if you've been following me for a while, but that is going to be the entire Bromance Book Club series by Lissa K. Adams. Okay, I'm just gonna hold up the first book, Bromance Book Club, but in case you guys don't know, this is about these very important men in Nashville. We've got celebrities, Gavin, the main character in this first book, he is a baseball player, and they all get together to read romance novels to better understand their partners and to better understand relationships in general and things like that. One of the things that I adore so much about this series is the group of guys, the Bromance Book Club themselves. They're all very distinctive characters. They add a lot to the story. And I also love the journeys that all of the characters go through in each of these romances. I'm just going to quickly tell you what each book in the series is about. But this one is about Gavin and Thea. Gavin is a baseball player. Basically, he learns one night that Thea has been faking orgasms with him their entire marriage. And so that sends him into a tailspin. And Thea may want a divorce. And so now Gavin 
Gavin is scared and so he goes to the book club for help. And then the second book which is Undercover Bromance. This is about Mac who is the founder of the book club. He is such an entertaining character. This is also the book where we get to see more of Vlad or the Russian who is just such a funny and entertaining character. We're actually getting his book in June or July I think. Um, but in this one we have Liv who's the heroine who was the sister of Thea from this book. And basically she witnesses a co-worker get sexually harassed by their boss and she ends up getting fired because of that and so now her and Mac are trying to take her boss down. Then we have Crazy Stupid Bromance which this is an autographed copy which is so so exciting. This one is about Alexis who was featured in Undercover Bromance. She was someone who was also sexually harassed by the guy that they were trying to take down in this book and so she's still very much reeling from that. She owns a cat cafe called Toe Beans which is the most adorable thing ever and then we have Noah the hero who is a hacktivist and so it is their friends to lovers romance. So yes I cannot recommend this series highly enough and I cannot wait to read more of the books as they come out. All right guys that is it for my top 10 favorite romances of 2020. I hope that you enjoyed. I would love it if you would leave a comment down below with a red heart emoji. I'll put that right over here if you got to this point in the video. I would also love to hear some recommendations from you guys. Tell me about some of your favorite romances that you read this year and I would love it if you would leave a like and subscribe and I thank you in advance if you do and with that being said I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!